Still a nation, what's going on? It's your man, Kev Easy, man. You see the room got a little more fuller. You feel me? Got my guy T from Pitts, and you feel me? Down there. I keep doing that, but I know it's not going to be like that when it's come out. You feel me? But you know, I got Pitch, and I got Dread, man. Wow. It's an extra week. It's still a football, you know? You deserve. Um, one thing today that made me happy because I saw it like yesterday and a couple of days ago. It's like TJ's been getting a whole lot of, yo, know, like not getting respect. He's not getting respect. And then now, you know, you see that he made first team all pro. Now, Dallas Cowboys fans, they can be mad because Mike is not in there. But TJ's in there, man. But um, also, Miles Killaroo made all pro, man. Shout out to him, man. So seeing that, yeah, so, yeah. All right, it's a couple of guys that made all pro first team to the list to me, to the list that matters. You feel me? But uh, what's your thoughts on that right there? Uh, for me, uh, much deserved. Uh, we finally get our flowers, get to the Steelers, you know, especially the defense, because they've been the driving force behind this season. So it's good to see them get the respect they deserve. A lot of people feel like that Minka, well, Minka Fitzpatrick not being on there was kind of a snub. But thing is, the only reason why he's not on there was because of his injuries. He's missed uh, six games this season, six, seven games. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But other than that, I mean, the guys who got selected, you know, they showed up and showed out this year. So kudos to them. Much deserved. But we'll see if that translates to the playoffs. But that's all I got on that. TJ ain't playing. So my my take is this: all pro is the. Well, this is my this is my this is my advice to the Cowboy fans. If y'all want to be mad at somebody, go be mad at Miles Garrett because Micah Parsons' numbers is better than Miles Garrett's. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, Miles Garrett is a beast, and Miles Garrett is a wrecking. He's a wrecking ball out there. But if we talk in numbers, which in the NFL, it, it, it confuses me. Because sometimes when we talk about guys, folks want to say their stats. And then other times they say, well, you know, look at the look at what they do that's not being accredited to a stat. So it's like, which one are we which one are we arguing off of? Are we arguing impact. off stats or are we arguing off impact? You know what I mean? Yeah. And impact, yes, Miles Garrett is a beast. But stats. Me, uh, Michael Parsons and TJ TJ Watt are the best uh, edge rushers. You know what I'm saying, and they should be rightfully uh, credited. So, so, but I'm just glad to see that TJ got the the flowers he deserved. But you know, it shouldn't stop there. He definitely should be defensive player of the year as well. For real. yeah, I'm I'm gonna piggyback off what Turn said. Um, he he definitely definitely deserved to be a defensive player of the year. Um, to what Dre was saying. To be honest, don't be real about it. Minka didn't deserve to be all pro this year. Um, he did. He really he did. did. Um, but, but but the thing was though, I think it was because he played a different role. He was he was playing in a box this year. All the years the past, he was playing in the center field. He was playing in a box primarily the whole year this year. I think it contributed to him being injured also. But but I mean, TJ is supposed supposed to be uh first team all pro if he wasn't some of them been terribly wrong and and um they did the right thing by putting them there um mike and not making it he probably gonna make the second team so i mean they let him cry man i don't, I don't care about that shit <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yo the regular season is over i just made these videos i didn't i'm editing them now you know they go i'm gonna put them out a little bit later but I did the top three offensive, best offensive players of this year um, and defensive players, right? Oh. Yeah. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm. this regular season. Oh, oh, for the and, Steelers. Okay, okay, yeah. for the Steelers. And, like, for offensive line, it's not just one offensive lineman. You just count that as a whole. You feel me? Yeah. Like, when it comes to this, right? So my list, um, it was, I think, George Pickens three. Mm -hmm. Um, the offensive line two and the running backs one. You know, yeah. George Pickens because like when he was effective, it was major, yeah. major. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? And um, having those back to back over one thirty receiving yards and just like this, the type of plays that he can make when he got them opportunities up there, man. The offensive line because. 
it got to the point in the season where they kind of said, this is going to be our identity. We're going to run this ball. We're going to make sure that we tough, you know, getting guys off the ball. Even if guys like Mason Cole can't get them back too far, he can at least turn his back to the hole so the running back can get up out of there, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, they just continue. And then you see Broderick Jones turn into the leader of the offensive line. Coach Tomlin already gave him that anointment, saying he's like mm -hmm. a Marcus, I mean, Marquise Pouncey. You feel me? That was major to say from Coach Tomlin, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, number ones is the running backs. Both of them guys got over a 1,000 <laughs> total yards. Najee, all of his is, you know, off the ground. But Jalen had like 700 some yards and or like 300 some yards receiving. So it's like both of those guys was able to get over a thousand yards total, man, in the uh, offense that struggled most of the year. For them guys to kind of be like, yo, I'm gonna put we're gonna put the offense on our backs, got the offense in line working hard with us, but we the ones that's controlling the game. So guys like a uh, Mason yeah. can make the right plays. I gotta give it to the running backs, man. They ball, they balled out, and they got a lot. Of, well, really, Najee got a lot of scrutiny early in the year, and um, he just balled out towards the end of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. high right. the list. Oh. So we like that's the really? offense. I'm, I'm gonna let y'all really get y'all top three offense, and then we're gonna do so defense. You look at it. Uh, I, I understand why you did the offensive line, right? And because you say top three, you know, so I would go I, – I would actually keep the same order. Um, but when I say offensive line, I would really say Isaac 2, 2A, two and Roderick 2B, right? No. Because Isaac hasn't given up a sack in oh. pass protection all year long, right? And when you look at Roderick coming on late in the game, um, I think – I, I think this is one thing that a lot of us or a lot of fans don't realize. This is the second year in the row. This is really the third year in a row where we've had a completely new offensive line, right? Mm -hmm. And for the offensive line, that is the position that needs continuity, right? They need – they got to learn each other. They got to know each other. And that takes time. And you can see over time as the line grown as the year went on, how the line started to gel more. Um, I think by the inconsistent play at quarterback, the offensive line took a lot of hits that they really didn't deserve, right? Right. So I, I agree with your list wholeheartedly. And with George Pickens, yeah, I think he's number three. If he can just show that he can be the same caliber player when he don't have a ball, when he do have a ball, then, you know, he's, had, he's easily handling our best player on offense. But it's being that all around player, you know, not just when you got the ball in your hands. Mm, okay. Yeah. Right. I think he displayed that in that last game, not getting the target, being upbeat, still doing other things. It's like if he could build on that, yeah. he'd be good. All right. Well, here's my. And, and I, I'm sorry not to cut you off, Jake, but have you noticed that in pass and downs now, when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, running, have you noticed that they don't really have pickings in the last three or four games that much in running situations? Nope. They will put an Allen Robinson in the game at yeah. wide receiver yeah. in running situations. It was like so they were it was like they were taking him off the field and running downs as well. I noticed that about four weeks out. Then they yeah. became this tight and heavy. Him and Boinkin. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sure. Great. Wait, All right, my top three for offense this year. All right, uh, Jeff said the O line. Me, I want to give my flowers to Broderick Jones specifically because our O line has been scrutinized for like the last you know few years or so. But for a rookie like him to come in and not only live up to expectation but exceed him as far as the you know the run being able to. You know, open up for the run game and bully some of those D linemen the way he is. Bully, and the thing is, he's bullying, you know, experienced D linemen, experienced linebackers. He's just talking. I know you, a lot of you guys have seen it, but he's tossing some of these guys. And you got to show him some love for that. So, yeah, he's not number three. My number two, I'm going to say, mm, I'm going to say Najee Harris specifically. 
I'm going to say, I mean, Jalen Moore is doing his thing too, but Najee Harris, and the reason why is because he came alive when he was supposed to, because there was a lot of people, and I'm not going to say any names, but who wrote him off, who said, oh man, he's a bust. He's not what people thought he was going to be. Like, dude, give him some damn time. And the thing is, he shut people's mouth with his third thousand yard season. So yes, he gets all the respect in the world and then some. So that's my number two. Number one, Kimi Hendrix, NFL young boy, George Pickens. So yes, yes, he gets my number one for the offensive player for the, for the squad for the year because anytime he, you know, anytime you need a clutch catch, anytime he sees some kind of daylight, he hasn't dropped one significant catch all year long, and he can beat ninety nine point nine percent of corners and safeties in that deep field. I mean, the thing is also bonus to him because. He's shown maturity. He's shown that he's not just a me, me, me kind of guy. He's shown that he is also a team player, more specifically in that um, last when? game against the Ravens. But yes. <laughs> when? <laughs> when? <laughs> when has he shown he's a team guy? In the last game. Like I said. Like, right. that's, but but that's, that's, that's what we're saying. He, he, yeah, he showed he's a team guy when he got the ball. He's not a team guy when he don't have it. But that's the problem is that he has shown that he can be it. He's not he, he has shown that he can be a team guy. Maybe last he, week was last week was like that, man. We let, let's give him that. He didn't get one yeah, target, last, yo. He was jumping around and all that, man. Oh no. Nah. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, but you know, but you if you notice though, he handled his role perfect last week. You know why? And he because he knew he knew he was getting he had stone up top. And he had a DB on him. So he was double. Sometimes, if you really look at the footage, he was tripled at times. Yeah, yeah. Because they coverage. was taking the outside. They was taking a strong backer. And they were shading him into a deep quarters uh, zone to where he was taking away the uh, slant route quickly from Pickens, right? Then they had yeah. the cornerback who was taking away a hitch or he was taking away the sideline route. And then they had the safety up top of Pickens who was taking away that third, the, uh, the, the secondary, basically top hat off. So they really was tripling him at that point. So yeah. and 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 you're right. His attitude was different. Um, and I think that in that that was more of him. I feel recognizing one weather condition wise, we all knew this wasn't going to be no pass, 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 pass game, right? So we knew we was going to have to rely on the play. But I think in that game, I would give him the recognition of understanding that his impact of being able to marginalized three players off defense to him, it definitely helps out the offense because now it's less hats that other people got to block. Right. I, I agree. Miss, um, I mean, yeah, Miss, what's your third? Mitch is Mason, Mason, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Not all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my, my, my list is similar to, to Cares and Terrence, but, but I'm a, I'm a, except I'm a, I'm a, I'm a line my out a little different. So three is Pickens. For me, three is Pickens. Uh, Younger, Younger just a monster, man. Got to get his, together. you know what I'm saying? He do got to get his attitude to go. But he a Younger, he got to learn. He's still learning. Number two, though, is Mike Tomlin. <laughs> I'm a respect it. And I'm going to tell, tell you I'm going to tell you why you said offense, dog. That's cheating, dog. You ain't say nah, coaching. He you said, said he, offense. Well, hey, look, that, that, he oh, offense. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I forgot. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, Mike Tomlin don't count. Mike Tomlin can't count. I, I count See? Say, I'll allow count. it. Yeah, nah, nah. Because we doing offense and defense, not overall. Mitch, you trying right, to get right. over it, man. I hate to be that guy, Mitch. I'm sorry. I hate to be that guy. <laughs> hell, I'll allow it. Me, if it was me personally, hell, I'll allow it. But hey, go on. Uh, all right, so Mike Tomlin and cool. offense don't make they don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's cool. Yes. So, I, so, I, so instead of Mike Tomlin, I say the O line. I give mm. I give the O line, particularly for me, the guards, Daniels, okay. Daniels, and. Uh, Oh, I, I yeah, I forgot about Daniels. I think we, I think to me personally, I think we got two of the best guards combos in the league. I don't think we getting the credit for it though, but that's cool. I ain't worried that's about that. That's because the center. Yeah, yeah, but but them two, them two are tough, straight yeah. up tough. I think combined, they probably gave up one or two sacks combined. So get them, but but 
number one going to be the running backs and, and especially Najee. But I'm going to show Warren some love, too, because Youngin was killing it early. But Najee, been listening to all the BS. Hey, Terrence, I still got that post that you made. I just ain't posted in the group yet, bro. I, I don't think I'm going to do it tomorrow. But, but, uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the post? The Najee apology post. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking post. that drink go viral. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm reposting that. I got to see it. <laughs> Yo, I, 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 I need a, he need an apology for everybody that says Man, something about him. Yeah, they do need to apologize for him, especially in that group. Cause they were talking wild about him in that group. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, Najee for me because dude been doing it. I I can't believe that they called him a bust when you had over a thousand your first year, you had over yeah. twelve hundred your second year, and then you had the what and what and what era. No era has a dude who done that been us. No. Nowhere. So like, I, don't, I, don't, I never. Yeah. 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 We talked yeah. about this before, right? And I told and I and I said this to Mitch too. When we talk football, and I told him, especially in the group he's talking about, bro. I don't talk football detail wise with people that didn't play because they don't understand it. Like. The yeah. whole time in this group, when I tell you they was crapping on Najee so hard, it was making right. me mad because they don't understand the difference of runners that they are. And I try to tell people, Jalen is a straight ahead. He's pounding the ground. He's the Jerome Bettis, right? He's yeah. going to go straight ahead. He ain't wasting no time. The type of line that we had at the beginning of the season was more catered to the runs that Jalen Warren was doing, yeah. right? Exactly. But with Najee, I was saying now is like a levy on bell ish where he's gonna be patient he's gonna see the hole don't say he's that too loud man like he's methodical. i don't like not yeah. in the backfield don't say that too loud mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a dog hey dog naji 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 a downhill guy he a downhill guy oh, when, you, when you hand on the rock and you going straight ahead that north south he crushing yeah. every every but when you try to throw him tosses and toss sweeps and shit, that's not him. That's not that's not his thing. You do that for Warren. Warren yeah. you crush those runs. You see what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, is people say that Jalen Warren should have been the starter over Najee. I disagree no. with him. Yeah, and, it, it, that was heavy. That was heavy. Yeah. And, and that, I was like, it, people it, not uh, understanding. Because I like I had a problem with Jalen Warren fumbling for a long time. Because yeah. running backs and, don't fumble. Like, yo. When you watch damn near every Le'Veon Bell snap, he only got fumble. Every fumble. You feel me? I don't know how many fumbles Le'Veon Bell had with us. Had a like, lot. Probably, probably like one. You feel me? Like yo, he did not fumble the ball. Yeah, so it's like, like yeah, anybody I, after him, they coming in, they fumbling and all that. I don't. I'm like, yo, yo, get him out of here. Like, yeah. and I know Coach Tomlin don't really like that. That's why I it was like, all right, Jalen Warren, you kind of done. Like, we're gonna let Najee finish this game out because you. You wilding right now with, with these phones. Yeah. You feel me? So um, yeah. I was never really on the Jalen Warren one because it reminded me of Le'Veon and James Conner. Like, James oh, Conner yeah. was good to be a backup at that time for the offensive line that we had. Like, when he got to Arizona, he became yeah. his own. Like, you know what I mean? That's a different type of thing over there. But, like, I didn't understand that then, you know? But, yeah, man. But, yo. But having two backs, though. Two backs is a beautiful thing, and they yeah, both complement each other. They complement each other well. Definitely. But let's get it. Top three defenders, Defense. man. This was my list. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm editing these drones up right now. I'm not really right now, but I'm doing it. You feel me? But uh, my top three, number three was Alex Highsmith, man. Um, the, the silent assassin. You feel me? He only had seven sacks. Um, but I think he had like 18 quarterback hits, you know, like he was doing this thing and he's good in coverage, had a pick, I think two picks, had a yeah, touchdown. You feel me? Like he was doing this thing this year, man. Um, number two for me, it go to Joy Porter Jr. Right. Yeah. Because I feel like Joy Porter Jr. Like in the beginning, you know, he was barely playing, just getting in, but it got to a point it was undeniable. Like he had to start. He faced a couple dogs yeah. this year. And yeah, I think he yeah. only got um, 
I don't want to say accused, but he got like credit for like giving up one touchdown. And mm -hmm. I think the touchdown they talking about, I'm like, y'all gonna put that on him? I ain't too sure about that one, but you know, uh, they put it on him. But it was like, yo, he's a real number one corner right now, rookie. You feel me? But we about mm -hmm. to see what he's gonna do with Stefan Diggs. You feel me? Stefan Diggs is a bad boy, you know. But um, work. he get that number two spot. Number one was obvious, man. T.J. Watt, T.J. Watt, <laughs> T.J. Watt, man. I, you shouldn't even say the top three. You should just say who's number two or number three. For yeah, real. we are. All of us gonna have the same yeah. number one. Yeah. <laughs> the issue man was the T.J. Watt's number one. So yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I would just say for me, I would actually flip yours. Um, I would say, of course, TJ number one for obvious reasons. I would say Haskell for number two because um, I think that he plays a part and he played a major part in the ability because TJ is going to eat regardless. But I think that he made the load easier for TJ by teams not being able to just focus on him. You know, so they had to respect Alex Highsmith's rush as well. Uh, when it came to TJ, like, it wasn't like, well, we just focus on TJ and let Alex eat. You know, Alex, when, you know, some of the forced fumbles that TJ was able to get was from QB pressures that uh, that uh, that Alex Highsmith got, right? Or some of the sacks was from Alex Highsmith pushing the uh, quarterback towards TJ's side as well. Um but I and I would say Joey Porter, not just because you know the one accredited touchdown, but just because of the fact that he's relentless in the in the midst of regardless of the person lined up across from him. When 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 I see him, I think of the other person who wore number twenty four for the Steelers. Who you know he wasn't the best defensive back, but you know he was a dog, and I don't think he was given the credit that he deserved. And that's Ike Taylor. Like he got yeah, his, hands, his hands was made of bricks. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That boy was he got that I yeah, I Taylor had that mindset. Like, I don't care who's in front of me, I don't care what your star status is, you just a regular guy. And that's how it appears that you know Joey Porter Jr. approaches the game. And I don't even think we really gonna get the the game that we would want to see on on normal, you know, weather between him and uh Stefan Diggs. You know, yeah. I think I don't think it's gonna be it's not gonna be a, a fair battle. Because the weather tends to help offensive players in these type of games. Because for a defense, you got to be reactionary into hips placement and you know the route we had, we he tend to be running. But in snow, we, like and it's going to be freezing cold. So I'm not, you know, say JPJ give up some stuff. I ain't going to be mad at him because the weather plays a part in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, um, I not. I'm gonna go to the same list Terrence got, but I'm gonna give an honorable mention, and yeah. the honorable mention gonna be uh, uh, Herbic and uh, what's my man? I'm 44. Um, oh, Golden. Yeah, both of them two, and they, because of them two, we got more depth at outside linebacker that we didn't have in the past. And Herbic been making big plays when he got the opportunity, man. Us, us, our ability to have depth is is why that I I feel a little more comfortable about playing this game Sunday. Honestly, mm -hmm. I feel like both of those guys can make some stuff happen. I think a lot of people sleeping on them, and I think this gonna be the game where they can actually show up, especially in weather like this when Josh probably gonna be trying to run like hell. I think Herbert and Forty Four can really, really mm -hmm. make a fat for real. But I double, but I double down to what uh, Terrence said, particularly about <laughs> Junior, because Joey Porter, he feisty. That's what I like about them, like about him the most. He got a lot of heart and he fight. He he ain't scared, he ain't backing down. He just he, he just fall. It's, he he feel like I know me and Terrence older than y'all, but Terrence gonna know what I'm saying. He feel he feel like like the older like the older corners, like how he just in that mode, like he like he fit the mode. Of a still a cornerback, he, you know. He fit that. He look actually. He fit that mode of a Darrell Reeves, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, that be bigger. He taller. He rangier than Darrell Reeves. Is that that's quick? Any quicker? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Drake. All right. Um, I think we're all inconsistent of number number one and number two. Batman and Robin, TJ and uh, Alex Smith. I mean, probably the I best running back. Junior too. But before I let you finish. 
My mm-hmm. reasoning for putting him over Alex Highsmith was just the level of difficulty. Cornerback is the hardest position to play. And sure, he's yeah. going against these killers on the other side. Alex Highsmith is experienced going against guys that he should probably beat. You feel me? I'm not like discrediting anything, but I feel like the level of difficulty was much higher for Joey Porter Jr. So that's why he's two over Alex Highsmith on my list. Sure. But you go ahead, that's Jerry. legit. That's legit. Yeah. And that's the end. I was kind of struggling for this one because I'm going to throw a name out here that has kind of been slept on this year for our defense. And um, you guys may or may, may or not agree with me, but um, I'm going to go. I am going to go ahead and put uh, JPJ at number three. But my honorable mention, believe it or not, is Cameron Hayward. And the reason why is because he came back from an injury and did more or less the same production. Some people might say he had a quiet year, but I'm going to give him his due, his credit due, because like I said, he was injured and came back and produced more or less the same and had more or less the same impact. So he did a pretty good service to us trying to get to the quarterback and somewhat slow down other teams' running games. So Hold on, Dre. Hold mm-hmm. on, Dre. All mm-hmm. right, so to, to push back against what you said a little bit with, with mm-hmm. the Cam, Cam Hayward joint, mm-hmm. that didn't put up the same production because when he, when he put up his same production, it's like 11 sacks. And all that type of shit, but, yeah, for a but season, yeah. I feel like our our run defense got better when he came back. Yes, I will say that because it felt like it felt like when he wasn't there, we was getting crushed in the run game. He came back and it seemed like it got shored up some. But but I think I think our run game suffered to me. Only this this is what I seen assessed by looking at film. Our, our run game struggled schematically. It was more of a personnel thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, Austin would throw that nickel. He used to uh, piss me off with this. He would throw that nickel out there, that that two outside back or two uh, deep D line look, and we would get gashed there almost every time. Yeah, we think, don't have no nickel corner. We, we ain't got no Mike Hilton no more. We ain't got no nickel corner that can fly down and stop the world and get to the quarterback right quick. I wish we did. Well, actually, you know what? We could probably use a couple of other, like, I'm not saying, well, who would be a good little nickel corner for us to have, or who could play like the role that Mike Hilton had? We got, we got, we got one on the team already. He just, he just was hurt. I just yeah. want to wait him, Trice from Purdue, who we drafted, who got yes. got hurt in the preseason. He is yes. tough, very yes, tough. But, but yeah. we just got to see what it is. A, a, a turns. That's why I say I think we need to draft a corner. I really mm-hmm. do. Cause they yo, just have yo, tri- yo, 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 yo. But let's get into what we came here for. It's Friday. You feel me? We got another week of Steelers football. You know, Steelers versus the Bills, man. Y'all know the conditions. Y'all spoke on it. Y'all know mm-hmm. the teams. We know the matchups. What are y'all thoughts on this game, man? I think we winning. Um, you know what I'm saying? I think we winning. And I said it last night. I said it again. It's the trenches. I and I, and as y'all was talking when y'all was giving when we were giving our best three on defense, I had a thought. Right, my thought or my hope would be this: I would hope that Austin would flip High Smith to be on the side against Hawkins, right, yeah. and allow Herbig and Golden to be on the week on the other side. Mm. Don't put them two on the side against a veteran left tackle like Hawkins. Right, put yeah. somebody over there that can give Hawkins fits where they can't just let him be one on one, where they're gonna still have to chip past him. Um, mm-hmm. that just came to my mind as I was thinking about it. But it's we talked about this before, Kev. The trenches is where it's at, mm-hmm. um, yeah. like any other game. Um, I actually think that my X factor for this week, um, is um, Larry Ogan Juby and uh, De- and uh, Benton. If them two can apply. Um, pressure, and if our D-line can um, what we call uh, lane and gap uh, assignment, if they can stay within their gaps and they can stay within those lanes, those passing lanes, to make it difficult for Josh to either see his receivers clearly or those lanes where he can easily maneuver out and make him push up in the pocket versus scrambling out of the pocket, I think that's where we stand a chance. And the turnovers... You know, Josh is going to turn it over, but when those moments happen, we got to capitalize on it. We got to have long, long drives, time of possession. We can't settle for three points. We got to get touchdowns. 
If we can capitalize on turnovers and make that into our plus minus, and then we can control that line of scrimmage defensively, I think we win. I agree with every word just uttered out of his mouth. Every single word. The only thing I'm going to say that's different for me is I really think the special team is going to be a huge part of this game. I think the punting and flipping the field position is going to be a huge part of this football game. So, Presley, Harvin need to be on his game and not on his bull. Ah. Like, I really feel like he's going to be a big part of this game. I'm not worried about Boz, but I'm worried about Harvin. So, I need him to show up. Cause I don't want, I don't need him to be put in the defense in bad situations. So it's, I feel like he's gonna play a big part in this game. Okay. All right, Quick. fellas. Now I've gone back and forth with this because my head says Bills, my heart says Steelers. Because you guys are right in the, in the amount of what you're saying as far as trench warfare. But to ask Mason Rudolph to go out there and outdo Josh Allen. You're asking a lot. You really are. We're not asking him to win it. Yeah, We're we not asking, asking him to win it. Yeah, he don't got to win that joint, bro. <laughs> I mean, but it's true. The thing is, you can't outdo him. Was, the Jets, was the Jets asking too much right. from their team? Was the Jets asking too much from their team when they beat Buffalo? And they beat not Buffalo down. Not at yeah, all. They... So why can't we expect the same from a quarterback that's been in our system for four and a half years? But that's the thing is like Mike Tom is going to have to cook up something to stop that. But see, here's our chance. This is what we're going to have to do. We can't play their game. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to play a slow, grindy, ground and pound game of football. Oh. We can't have them, you know, you know, we can't have a fast paced kind of game because that's crazy. Dog. <laughs> Hey, Cav, crazy. <laughs> hey, it's hard not to see Cav out my peripheral, dog. When I be like, hey, listen. I swear on my grandmother, bro. Sometimes, like, even when we be on D show, sometimes I can't even look in Kaz's direction, dog. <laughs> because Kaz, Kaz, Kaz nonverbal communication is strong as no, hell, bro. No bull. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dre. Go ahead, Dre. <laughs> Ground and pound was crazy. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was well, I supposed to pause that? But anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> joke aside, joke aside, though. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, we're gonna have to play um a game that we have to. We're gonna have to pretty much ride that clock. We're gonna have to keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hands as much as possible because if we try to play run and gun on them, they will smoke our boots. As much as I hate to say it. And top that with the fact that we don't have T.J. Watt to slow down, like, you know, to be able to rush and get pressure on them. We're going to have to ask. I mean, the thing is, I don't think we are going to have to ask a lot from the duo of Herbig and Highsmith. I think they'll be able to put as much much pressure. But, hey, having T.J. Watt on the field will make a hell of a lot of difference. But I think that the our key to victory, I, for sure, I think our key to victory is just to play a slow, grinding game and to try to milk that clock as much as possible. All right, okay. all right, Jay. Okay. All right, I'm like, I'm like, y'all points, man. Hey, like hey, Kev. Hey, Kev. Hey, uh, yeah, hey, Kev. Hey, look, <laughs> hey, uh, you know what, Kev? Maybe you, you, you wear a mask when we do <laughs> Like, so we can't see you. The Kev's eyebrow, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> he, my man said, ground up town. He said, ride the clock. He <laughs> I try to keep that dirty mind out in football, but yeah. Look, 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 it's, 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 it's a messed up world we live in, Dre. That's just oh, man. But yeah, uh, look, my point, I think we got, of course, I agree with most of you guys, you feel me, in the trenches. Trenches win all, especially in these types of games. Presley Harvin, that's what Mitch said, his challenge. My challenge is Jalen Warren. You better not fumble one time in this game, bro. You fumble, you like I want you out the game. I don't my time are not gonna do that. But look, <laughs> this don't fumble, my guy. But look, man, give me y'all scores and then we're gonna end this show, man. Just the score. No explanation, just the score. 13 10. Mm. 13 10. Um 17 13. Mm. Steelers. 
31 20 Bills. Damn. What was the score? 31 20 Bills. 31. Damn. Damn. <laughs> 21 21 6 Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. I like that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's bold. That's a bold yeah. position right there. That's yeah, I like that. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kai. I'm sorry, Kai. Can, can you can you ask Draz to elaborate on that, bro? Oh, nah, nah, man. We're gonna we gonna end it on that, man. It should make that easy. <laughs> We can go over to the we guys, can, I got time today. This is still for seven podcast yeah. episode one forty one. We gonna let Dre live for the rest of the night. <laughs> Shout out to the guys, man. We out of here, y'all. <laughs> All right, do some though. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and don't forget to follow the podcast on all streaming platforms.